Welcome back everyone to TNO, I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and we're currently playing as two men, as you can tell, led by Mario Lazar Kaganovich, but rebuilding the Red Army. Valery Konstantinovich Zima breathed the chilly Siberian air. The officer in Kaganovich's army had known little more than bunkers and bombing drills for the past few years, and despite the fact that the wintry bite of the cold morning seemed to pierce him to the bone, he could barely feel it, the fresh air felt too good on his face and in his lungs. The long-time Soviet soldier looked over what he jokingly referred to as peers as his flock, a ragtag group of conscripts that were drawn from all sectors of society. They were Schwetz, who came from a poor migrant family, his nose had been broken too many times, and his slender frame and short stature betrayed his family's poverty as malnourishment. Filipov, the son of a disgraced intellectual who carried with him an air of undeserved snobbishness, and Vinogradov, whose plumpish frame told volumes about his background as a fourth son of a party official. These three were but a few familiar faces in a crowd well over a dozen. Despite Zima's long service, he remained on a maddeningly low rung of the Republic's command structure. Zima watched over his troops attempting to form up inside, noticing the glaring flaws that his soldiers likely didn't even know were issues. There was a lot of work to do, Zima thought to himself, but as one soldier nearly pumped into another, Zima pushed his stress out of his mind and took another deep breath of fresh air. Bunker air was the worst, he reminded himself. Tell that to the people in Fallout. As he exhaled, a sense of pride, something he had not felt in a long, long time, welled up within his chest. Comrades, he barked, pride overflowing from his body towards his charges. It's time we learn the bank's basics. We'll start with the march, and we shall do, I asked you guys yesterday, uh, whether we should do rebuilding the factories and rebuilding the communes, as well as Red Armor and the Red Army. So, and actually, there, from yesterday's like video, at least at the time of this recording, there was a lot of uh, support for going down a certain route. Ooh, my apologies about that, but a certain route with going uh, with a certain dude, a certain <clears throat> reformist route that prioritizes, prioritizes agriculture. So, how about we rebuild the communes? The restructuring of the WSPR's infrastructure for war will require the tireless efforts of the entire population. Rapid industrialization and the style of Joseph Stalin's plans would certainly improve the situation on that front, but a small slice of the USSR may not be ready for such sweeping changes. Agricultural reform and support for civilians are necessary to ensure that further development does not backfire and inseminate or em emiserate the population. New, bigger collective farms, widespread distribution of agricultural machinery, massive housing construction drives, the Communist Party will meet all the people's demands and more. And the benefits to the industry down the line will be fruitful indeed. Now, this is more we left off yesterday. It's pretty close, but I was able to break through here and cut the capital off completely. Even though we still don't have enough divisions for the entire front, it is what it is. Hopefully we can do well here. Cut off some divisions. Uh, this... Point. I think these guys might have been moving, so... Oh! Look, everyone prevails against Himmler. Good job, guys. Just hopefully they don't try to kill us off too much. So, yeah, they're still trying to come out here, which is really bad, so... But we got... Can you please move any faster, please? There you go. Alright, there you go. I don't want to leave the capital at all. Oh, they're going to circle us. Mm. God dang it. Keep it up. I would love to take Svedlos, but I don't think that's going to be enough to actually kill them off. So... Yeah, we could use another division. Oh, we're building the communes. And we shall do enforced farming. Bludgeoning industrial development causes a corresponding increase in the population, which in turn requires significantly more food. This is straightforward, but there's one problem. West Siberia is far from being Russia's breadbasket. Agricultural production has never been this region's speciality, but it is hard to imagine a future path for the WSPR if it does not increase significantly. We need to make use of every inch of land we possess. Grain quotas will go up. Leaving one's fields idle will be prohibited. The peasants you may protest, but they will be compensated appropriately in the end. The task of feeding the country is one of the most noble ones out there. Ah, yes. So we're going to come up here and circle this guy, kill him off, and force ourselves down south so that we can actually do some other things here. Because I'm not... Because there's too many victory points here, apparently, for right now. Oh, look at that. Yes. Yes. Keep him in place. Help him out. Help him out. Uh, and you guys are going to go right here. Just take all the victory points for now. Because these guys... As much as I would love to see them starving, they're not starving yet because they, the victory points give you too much uh, supply, apparently, right now. Oh, where did you come from? Are they doing last stand? No, they're not. They're losing some organization. Baratia. Good. These guys, how, how have you not died yet? What the heck? Uh, come over here, then. This is not making any sort of sense whatsoever. But at least we're winning right here somewhat. We were winning here for a while. This is really taking a long, long time. 3,000 casualties. Who's taking more casualties than they, than they have? Why did you stop attacking? Oh, they might actually destroy our division there. Wow. Communal loyalty? Let's do land redistribution. There are a number of peasants willing to contribute to our nascent agricultural development, but they are unable to 
without any land to work. The uneven distribution of rural land hampers our goals and leads to greater suffering among the landless peasantry, as with many social programs or problems. The responsibility falls to the Communist Party to rectify the situation. Collective farming and policy of Stalin and segments of the Bolshevik opposition shot down by Bukharin's government is the key to overcoming our ills. The state will manage farms worked on by all the peasants in the in area, allowing for modernization and efficient administration on a vast scale. The landless peasants will know justice, and more food will flow to the cities than ever before. Please don't kill the division off. Please, 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 please. Help them out, help them out. Push in, push in. Get to that victory point before we lose organization. Okay, th those guys should die. How are these guys still not dying yet? You know what? Come up there. They, they want to leave, go be it. We can encircle them and kill them off, hopefully. There you go. Kill them off. Okay, seriously, like, how are they not dead? I guess they have engineers, but there's only 12 combo with, like, us, so... Yeah, hmm. Move in, move in, take the... Come on, come on. Win somewhere, please, just win somewhere. Come on, come on, come on. Jesus, you take way too long for this. Oh, crap, you gotta go here, then. Can we just please kill the division off? How are you not, how are you not winning? How are you not winning? I swear, man, this is not making a single look of sense. How? Wait, what happened to our... Tank? Hello? <laughs> well, we lost Lenin's body. Well, the corpse of Vladimir Lenin has been lost to us for much of the same reasons we conquered in the first place. Lenin's body, although holding prominence as a political tool, is not viable strategic or t tactical nexus. The opponent may have it, and although they may save the propaganda opportunities afforded to them by willing the corpse of the Soviet Union's father, we will see to it that these bodies are taken in due time. Um, hopefully they don't collapse. That's really bad. Yeah, this is... I think the AI might be cheating or something. Because this makes literally no sense. With no supplies. Yeah, they have engineers. Literally no supplies. They're still able to get, put up a good resistance. Like, that makes literally no sense. Die, you son of a gun. Come to two men and kill them off. How have you not killed them off? Force the attack. Either you die or they die. There's no in between. Okay, so if you want to read about that, please go right ahead. We have his body back. Yeah, I don't know, but... Spared loss? I think they're cheating or something. They've got to be. They've got to be cheating. This doesn't make a single lick of sense. Either you die or they die. There's no in-between. Look at that. I don't understand this. I really don't understand that. They don't have that much war support, do they? The 59, that's not that much. That's really not much at all. But, uh, we'll go with the Red Army for this one. Because as much as we want to do this one, we want to reform the Guard. So, the Red Army, the core of the new of any army, rather than sophisticated weaponries, or weapons, or lofty strategies, is its men. Since the Great Patriotic War, the Russian forces have held their own against a far more modern Wehrmacht simply by well, being well-trained and disciplined, even with a gap in resources. Armor has its place, but focusing too heavily on new technology over the cohesion and effectiveness of our soldiers expends resources that we cannot afford to waste. An infantry-centered army, with professional, well-equipped soldiers and vehicles in support role, is a way forward for the new Soviet Union. So, look at that, we're still losing with force attack. Yeah, the AI is cheating or something. I guarantee it. I have to... There's no There's no other explanation for that, so... No other human explanation. Hmm... Come down there and do that. Yeah, I love it when the AI cheats. Got to love it. <clears throat> Please get up there and kill them off. Please, come on. Look at that. I know it's over river. I understand that. But I don't care. I really don't care. I got the Red Army done. That's good. Be strong. We, the Russian people, have been ridiculed and accused of being weak individuals, acting in hordes to move against our many enemies. We must show the world what the power of the Russian man is when utilized to his full capacity. With this, we will simply unleash our new campaign, one of a simple motto, but one that will fill soldiers with patriotic urge like any other be strong. For far too long, the Slavic men have been trampled, his lands ravaged, and his peoples massacred, but that shall no longer be true. The soldiers of our armies will be the paragon of virtue, the paragon of virtue, of strength, paragon of strength, virtue as much. And as such, must be equipped in turn. The best equipment at the disposal of our armories, or that can be bought from the, around the fracture of Russia, we seek to pierce back together. We, we will be given to our soldiers. While the best Russian equipment is not the best in the world, our soldiers will, will no doubt, be the definition of the new Soviet man. Wow. How, how, why did that take so long? I mean, seriously. Why does it... it it's literally like the AI is cheating. Like... It doesn't make any sense, but Sergeant Kusinov shuffled through the reports in his hands. His men had done exceptionally well. Near perfectly, in fact, but they had not met his expectations. He skimmed through the papers one more time before placing them on the table. He blew his whistle to assemble his troops. 
As men were scattered under various tents, talking, playing cards, or doing nothing at all. Exhausted from the day-long military exercise, the warm afternoon sun lulled their sore muscles and heavy eyes into an innocent half-slumber in which the grass was soft and the day's work was nearly over. They also cracked over the naive reality and they soon assembled in rigid, several rigid rows, ready to receive the words of the commander. You call this your best, Kutsin, Kutsinitsov spat? Several soldiers twitched, but none of them averted their gaze forward forward gaze. Will you be this lazy the next time bandits attack a village? Will you sit back, light a cigarette, and watch some butcher women and children? You scream to the men? Well, answer me. No, sir, came the unified response. Then get back to your positions. We're doing the exercise all over again. This time, do it correctly? Yes, sir. With nothing but cheaters, it's like for the AI. Love it, love it, love it, right? Gotta love it. Do they? They gotta have some sort of national spirits here that makes them impossible to kill. Uh, division, defense and court territory. But you know what? What if they take... <laughs> Revisionist terrorist? Yeah, that's not enough of a debuff for these guys. That's really not enough. Um, there's that stuff. Medium influence? Yeah. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. These guys are cheating. Definitely. They have to be cheating. This doesn't make any sense. It just takes Fed Lusk. Is that really enough? Oh, that might be enough. To oh, I should take him out earlier. But yeah, no. I'm, I'm fully convinced that these guys are cheating. I have to be. Because there's no way they're able to just withstand countless attacks after... <laughs> After you completely encircle them, and they have no strength left. Or they have some strength, but still. Like, that makes no sense. That makes literally no sense. Oh, Thief Hugo. Oh, Hugo. Yes. I'll go for Hugo. Why not? So, already off to a good start in this two-man campaign, right? <laughs> I'm fully convinced that they were cheating or something like that. They had to be. Had to be. But, I'm probably wrong. But, at least we got, our soldiers are better strength. And I hate these stupid divisions. These, these divisions are so weak. So garbage. Let's go with these guys. That'd be good. Refugees from Omsk. They came with haversacks, wheelbarrows, carts, and bicycles. They carried jewelry, potatoes, clothing, and blankets, and children. All they had left in this world. Alexei looked over the march column of bowed heads and bent backs. All refugees refugees from Omsk, the soon-to-be-failed experiment. Halt, he yelled, raising his weapon. Most of them didn't even look up. A couple did with unchanged expressions. They were probably too tired to be surprised anymore. Any higher function to disappear from these poor castles a long way down that dirt road. On the one hand, his orders were to let in only those who could serve, either as soldiers or laborers. Some of these people were certainly less starved than others, not starved at all, in fact. They would make excellent soldiers after some training, and if they, if they were let through with what appeared to be their families, so much the better. But this put Alexei on a, at a significant risk. If these refugees contained one sympathizer or saboteur, then their entry was traced back to him. There would be dire consequences. He looked at his left at, 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 oh, my God, at Dmitri, who was already staring at him, awaiting orders. At the moment, we can't risk it. We can't risk it. Turn around, go home. And actually, we only got one percent more stability, which kind of sucks. Uh, but we're going to mm, reform the guard. I think it'd be pretty good. We, we would like more attack. Which is finest. More attack would be nice. Yeah. Uh, the black state in the cradle. Oh, do we have any more s upgrades here? Ooh, improve our industrial base as we reclaim Siberia. That's not bad. Lose political power. More monthly population. Less stability. All right. Mm, unite against evil. Well, do the black state in the cradle. Dmitry Kardashev, the hated general who betrayed his, our republic when it needed him most, may be dead, but his dark legacy lives on in the form of his successor, Dmitry Yazov. He has already proven to be a potentially fearsome adversary, adversary indeed, and under his watch, the Black League has become more powerful than ever before. If not dealt with soon, they can become a serious threat. The Red Army's plan campaign against the Black League will need be bloody before these zealots are famed for their inhuman discipline and ferocity in battle. Despite these advantages, however, they are lacking in mechanized units, and rumors possess that Yazov's regime is not nearly as stable as it would seem. Whatever strategic course of action we decide upon, it would be the best to proceed with caution when dealing with these madmen, which I think I read yesterday too, but oh well. Let's see. Uh, so you guys will be doing that, and you guys will come over here. Don't want to forget about that. That's the only time I'll ever use these divisions. And actually... We can keep on that for now, because it does help with suppression properly, right? Suppression, if we remove that, it wants... Oh. No? Suppression is five. <clears throat> suppression is five, so I guess we'll do that. Save some, some support equipment, shall we? Yes, we shall. All right, so after a little bit of rage in the early part of this episode, which I don't know why it was so difficult. Thank you, uh, cheating AI. Uh, which I'm, I'm holding on to that. I'm holding on to that, but whatever. Let's do that, and we'll do some coffee, even though it's pretty lukewarm at this point. Don't do that, because we could use some fighters. And research. Uh, more land out attack, maybe? Let's go with that one. <clears throat> Better guns? Yes, please. Let's go ahead and attack, and see what they do. And they say no, yes. Oh, pay tribute. Good. Alright, so at this point, we're probably going to rage against these guys as well, but 
Whatever. Test their medals. That's a lot of manpower. Oh, they only have four divisions. You know, they're going to probably find a way to piss me off, but, you know, whatever. And uh, then we'll do uh, Southern Build-Up. The war against the fearsome Black League will be brutal, and the borders must be prepared for any possibility. In the unlikely scenario that our offensive becomes a disaster and our comrades are forced to retreat, they will need a line of defense to fall back to. Already, the Red Army is deploying to the fringes of the Black League territory, and once they are there, a fallback line will be hastily constructed while the plans of attack are still being devised. There will be no second thoughts from this point onwards. The scouts of the League will doubtlessly spot our troops' presence building up on the border, and these aggressive maneuvers will surely send our Republic down a one-way road towards conflict. When did they start attacking me? Oh, was it just random or something? Oh, oh let's go. Let's, um, what, what are we lacking? Academic base. No, we're doing both of these. That's pretty good. I guess expertise. Yeah, I'll do expertise for once. Why not? Yay. I don't care about this stuff. Black League, turn back. Look at that. As they should be. <clears throat> Alexander Fedorov stood atop a small hill, looking down the once beautiful fields that spread out below it. What had once been a landscape fit for scenic painting was now po pockmarked. With craters and torn apart by muddy traps where vehicles had come and gone, a few hundred meters to his right, a burning tank bellowed a pillar of black, oily smoke in the sky. Scattered around the fields like discarded toys were the bodies of soldiers from both sides. They looked almost ridiculous. The ways they were twisted and contorted, the cleanup effort would take some time, and even then the little valley he had once enjoyed garrisoning so much would never look the same. Excuse me, Colonel Fedorov, said one of his lieutenants, approaching him. He turned away from the scene to address the men. What is it, Lieutenant? It seems that the enemy has retreated back to the territory. Our scouts have reported that they've withdrawn from the field completely and are heading east at full speed. Should we pursue them? I don't think so. They nearly overwhelmed us here. It's best not to push our luck. Tell your men to start counting casualties. Ours and theirs. I want to report as soon as possible. Yes, sir. Lieutenant scurried away, and Fedorov turned back towards the grim view. He refused to let it show up, but the way the Black League soldiers fought disturbed him. They came on relentlessly with no concern for the lives. If he hadn't seen them bleed with his own eyes, he would have been convinced that they were robots. This had not been the, their full strength either. He knew a test when he saw one, and thankfully he managed to pass the Black Leagues. He can only hope he would do as well when they decided the time for games was over. We must prepare for the worst. Very good. And please let us just kill them off. United against evil, my friends. The Black League, above all, seeks revenge against the Germans. Well, this quest is not entirely unwarranted. <clears throat> Their methods of reaching this goal have simply gone too far. From top to bottom, the Black State is geared towards only one thing, war. As a result, the innocents who are unfortunate enough to find themselves living under the Black League suffer needless casualties or cruelties in the name of revenge. Our war against the Black League will be more than just another step on the road towards rebuilding the Republic. It will be a struggle against evil itself. When the oppressed people of Omsk know that of our intention to, is to liberate them from their negative situation, they will surely welcome our forces with open arms and help our comrades root out their league's dark presence for good. More attack and recovery rate for, fifth, for 90 days, for a few months. Which is very, very nice. Anything you hear that you should care about? Nope. And then strangle the creature. The day is finally arrived. Our plans to destroy the Black League of Omsk will be put into motion. The Red League, or Red Army, is to launch a daring and aggressive assault into the heart of the territory with the aim of overwhelming the forces of the League before they can muster a serious defense or resistance. Most of our military experts agree, however, that the casualties sustained by both sides will be significant. These Black League dogs do not deserve your fear, comrades. They may hold a great deal of bitter rage within their hearts, but... They will soon learn that anger does not account for everything in war. The evil legions of the Black League shall be crushed into dust by a resurgent Red Army, and Yazov's reign of terror over Omsk shall from finally come to, to a close at her hand. Onwards, my friends. Onwards. And probably a little bit of rage. Look at that. Libertarian Socialism. Oh, boy. And the next phase. Uh, we can do that one eventually. Uh, so we'll read it, because we can. Comrades, we've achieved victory over those who betrayed the Republic. Sverdlovsk has been wrested from the control of the traitorous marshal, while the malevolent Black League in Omsk was crushed without any difficulty under the overwhelming advance of the Red Army. For the first time in years, a real semblance of unity has been restored to the Republic's core regions. With their immediate foes dealt with, it is time to move on to the next phase of unification. The territories that were reclaimed still require a certain degree of persuasion to accept the benevolent rule of Chairman Kaganovich, and vast swaths of abandoned industrial sectors now wait new life. But we shall reform the Guard first. The Guard forms one of the many political excesses of the system, a remnant of an older age that was rotted in incapability rather than adapted to the changing times. If they cannot evolve, we must force them to the Red Guard, forming a system of paramilitary organizations more political than functional, it's barely combat capable force, and in a situation where they were thrust into battle, they would struggle best. We must change this through a comprehensive reevaluation of the Red Guard, while the political aspect is more important and their contribution is uh, to stability is notable. We have been given reason to believe that many of the lower level leaders of the Guard have no business being leaders at all, especially not of such an esteemed political organization. The rotting externalities of the Guard will be cut off and ruthlessly examined, while capable men will be put into these positions. The Guard will also have more frequent training in more relevant tactics, with better equipment and routine pay to expand loyalty. Uh, and that's not going to be easy, but we've got to be prepared. Uh, I think there's a room here, so we're going to attack probably... Oh, goodness, here. I'll probably attack here first. 
Because this is where we have the most points of contact. Ah, civilian construction. Very good, very good. Go with uh, industry. Let's go with... Yeah, more factory output would be nice. Let's break over that river if we can, right? Right? Yep, it is. River and terrain is god-awful. Oh boy, forests suck fighting in them. But we've broken over, and we shall be there very, very soon. Hey, look, another division. At least we didn't lose any divisions in that one, you know, war. Oh, and, oh, they're actually attacking us. Look at that. Oh, man, they are... Wow. We are entrenched. We are literally entrenched. They're attacking over river, and they're still beating us up. I swear to God, our soldiers suck. Our soldiers really just suck. A uh, thousand, two thousand. Yeah, we got to make sure. Actually, what are what level are we on? Widespread cronyism. Oh, that would explain it. Well, it's partially. That really, not bueno. Really not bueno. <clears throat> but more coffee. All right. Would they like to attack again? Uh, let's take a look. On the road to war, will they five to seven divisions? Yep, they're, they're attacking again. We're forming guard. And then we will have Russia's finest for more attack. Naturally, if our armies would be the best, or be the one to bring back Russia from the brink, it also must be our finest. Every soldier must be the paragon of Soviet man with extensive drilling and physical and mental exercises. The physical requirements will go up and the room for air down. From now on, every soldier that serves us for the future of the Union shall be the perfect soldier. <clears throat> perfect soldier. Strong, smart, and zealous. Around us sits peasants' armies, mercenary armies, and the armies of the false prophets. None of these would be a match for the truly battle-hardened, disciplined, and drilled army, functioning as cogs in a giant machine that would roll through all of Russia, from Vladivostok to the Baltics. In the coming trials, each soldier will be faced with difficulty, forced to confront sacrifice, and even experience it themselves. It's our job to ensure that when this time comes, the soldiers will have no trouble dispersing the enemy, bringing glory to our Union. Well, at least we're holding on. Yeah, at this point, I'm going to make sure our guys are really, really thick. Uh, do we have any extra spare guns yet? Oh, we kind of do, but that's not going to be enough, I think, to make these guys 20 combo with at the very least. Alright, so they attack like crazy, which is good. Let's try to break over here as well. Oh, you can't do that. Oh, that sucks. They're only small groups. That's good. Oh, do you have any upgrades? Yes, it looks like he does. Very good. Nope. Alright, oh! Hello. Wow. Hold on, hold on. You go die in a hole now. But we can't... Wow, we were actually defeated. Yeah, our divisions are just god-awful. Like, they're really bad. I should have realized that before. No wonder we were struggling with Spedlos so much. Our divisions are straight garbage. They yeah, just go and hold for now. It's fine. Um, I want you guys to hold. I want you to go right there. Uh, can you actually go right there, maybe? Yeah, you might be able to. Yeah, let's circle that piece of garbage division. Yeah, I'm going to make sure our, our divisions are the strongest in Russia, so. Oh, uh, power to the mighty. It's tr always been our goal to, to introduce to Russia a truly a meritocratic society where nothing but des desert gives power. <clears throat> We figure the best place to introduce this idea is to our army where corrupt generals still sit in positions of power we value so highly. We must push forward a new model based on the ideas of equality, fraternity, and only the best soldiers going up the ranks. We'll never be in the position to be the true heirs of the Soviet Union unless the Union not only continues but expands on the legacy of the former one. Every soldier will be evaluated, his determination measured, and his capabilities tracked. By tracking the abilities of our men, we can then make sure that only the cream of the crop are selected for additional officer training. The training and conditioning of our soldiers matched with the leadership of a true meritocracy will be the driving force that shall bring our men to Moscow. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Here goes the socialism. Private Valeria Osipova looked across the crowds of people. They were all cheering, cheering for her. She strained her head, searching for her mother. Within a few seconds, she found her near the front, cheering louder than anyone else. Osipova smiled at her and returned her gaze forward, stoic and brave, like any hero should be. She was in a city square on a platform with several high-ranking party members and, most importantly, Chairman Kaganovich. The flags of the West Russian People's Republic and the Soviet Union were hung behind him. We are here today to honor Comrade Valeria Osipova for bravery in saving an entire family from a German attack, the German chairman began, speaking into a microphone that projected his voice across the square. Comrade Osipova risked her own life to rescue a family of five after the farm was bombed. She crawled through the ruins, freed them from the burning wreckage, and was even able to resusc resuscitate one of the children who would have died had she not been present. For her valiant actions, I hereby award Comrade Osipova, hero of the People's Republic. Kaganovich, Kaganovich pinned a simple yet striking medal to her chest before he began to clap. The party members and the crowd followed, and soon the entire square was clapping for Valeria Osipova, hero of the People's Republic. Three cheers for Comrade Osipova. Now, there was a comment saying that I, I'm mispronouncing Kaganovich. There needs to be more emphasis on the O. 
uh, Kaganovic. Kaganovic. That's the quick way to pronounce his name. I, I'm not exactly sure, so... I hope that's the quick way to do it. You're not going to lose here, son. If you lose, you're going to die. Oh, go for, go for arms. That'd be nice. Arms this time of year would be very nice. Oh, crap. Now we're not going to be able to get it. God darn it. Just stay here for now. We want to destroy that division first. Muy bueno. Muy bueno. <clears throat> and where you guys headed? Up there? Oh, it's not a bad idea. Cool. Head on over there if you can. Head on down if you can. Order St. George is gone. Goodbye. Wow. Yeah, our divisions are just god-awful. Instead of making more, we're going to make them bigger. Screw it. Cut that one down. We're going we're gonna to go bigger. Uh, do we have any artillery? <clears throat> no. Guns? Ooh, we're lacking quite a few guns. I don't care what happens. we got to make these guys bigger. We actually have engineers on our guys, and yet they still suck. Oh, so bad. So bad. We're going to lose quite a bit of manpower. That's okay. Well, they traded territory for more territory, so I'll take your territory. Thank you. If they want to leave, uh, that's okay with me. We'll go straight for Omsk, then. Force it. Do not let them move. Oh, bye-bye, President Kennedy. Have a good day. Oh, well, maybe he's not going to have a good day. But repopulation program, shall we? History's not been kind of the Russians. War and one of us a great hole in the demographic structure where millions and millions of people should be. When prospects were so dire, what could, who could blame for the suffering women of the nation not, for not wanting to bring children into such a world? Now things are better, we have to run into a different problem. There are simply not enough people for our future economic goals. We are the first and foremost a party of labor. And there's no nobler labor than motherhood. Subsidies for families and single mothers. Awards to those mothers' heroines who bravely raise ten or more children and who controls... On, and controls on abortion will bring us back to where we need to be in terms of population. Oh boy, that's totally not going to backfire. Look, I'm all for having ten kids per woman, but we gotta be uh, gotta make sure the family unit's nice and strong, though. Because as much as we love repopulating the earth, we gotta be a little bit careful. Unlike my attacks here. Of course, they would all defend Omsk in the end. Of course. All right, so let's stop doing that. That's kind of suicide. That's literally just suicide. You guys keep attacking Omsk, though. Are they doing forced defense? I doubt it. Yeah. And were we able to core the Sverdlovsk yet? Yes, it looks like we were able to. That's good. All right, so that cost me way more than I would have liked, but at least we're learning here. Yeah, God, our armies suck badly. Alright, so how many guns are we out? Not bad. That's not bad. I mean, obviously, we, we could be doing better, but whatever. Alright, not bad. Repopulation centers, and then the next phase. Yes, please. Uh, re Ooh, look at that, yes. Restore administration. Let's recentralize the industry. Omsk and Sfer Lusk were vital components of our industrial heartland. After the split and reconquest, they lie in flames. Thankfully, restoring their factories to the former glory may not be difficult as it seems. Both of their former statelets split off from the WSPR after all, and they inherited our industrial scheme, a large focus on heavy industry controlled by the state. Incorporating their factories into our own planning administration will require the creation of several new bureaus and worker collectives. After a brief survey of their capabilities, they will be more than ready to contribute to the war effort. Republic stands once more. The breakaway states of Omsk and Svedlovsk both formally issued their surrender, making the reunification of Western Siberia the People's Re Republic official after the years of confusion. The shattering of the People's Republic by counter-revolutionaries was one of the darkest chapters in the annals of hit socialism since the fascist invasion of 1941, Kaganovich said in a speech, in the city center of two men commemorating their re reunification. But armed with Stalinist theory, the mind of the class-conscious proletarian was able to triumph against the guns of the bourgeoisie. Numerous celebrations are being planned to commemorate the reunification of West Siberia, including a nationwide holiday for the workers. Military parades held in major cities, and free seminars at educational institutions are all about Stalinism. The Crimson Banner shall fly again, and I was looking over here. Purple? Comey's purple now? Who is Boris Ponomarov? Parmonayov. Whoa. Mr. Purple. Mr. Purple lover. Oh, Pavlodar. Wow. Novosibirsk is doing pretty well, I guess. Well, at least it's not Kemerovo. Oh, boy. No, please. Oh, we got quite a few IFVs. A lot of support equipment. Not bad. Uh, we want more artillery, though. I want way more artillery. We're going to need way, 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 way more. What's over here, actually? 
Oh, you guys are not big enough. Uh, I would like main battle tanks eventually, though. Engineers would be pretty good for you guys. we got enough army speed for this. IFVs. Eh. At least go with maybe more motorized for now. It does hurt the armor, but gives them a little bit more strength, probably, so. Alright. Mm. I guess it gives them better motorized, then. Oh, what do we have over here? Oh, nothing. Oh, yes. Raid. Yes, please. Good. Restore our administration. The traitorous junta of Svedlovsk and the madmen of Omsk have been defeated once more and for all. And the difficult task of returning both regions to our control begins. The higher administrations of both must be completely restaffed. The higher officers of the Rokosovsky clique cannot be trusted for obvious reasons. The Black League's officials barely deserve the bullets for shooting with them. Much less a position in government. Finding good kindness with local knowledge to staff or new bureaucracy is a must. Restoring the court territory of the West Siberian People's Republic is our patriotic duty. Onwards for the revolution. And let's go scan for loot and beat the crap out of Pavlodar. Because we can. <clears throat> and integrate Omsk because we need that territory, industry, and stuff like that. So, there we go. Good luck. And purge the Black League. We knew the vague details of the Black League's brutality, combing through the records in the aftermath of our victory. That's good that they were more malevolent than we could imagine. The first time the League materialized within our ranks, it broke large amounts of territory off the WSPR and severely weakened our war effort. We cannot allow this to happen again. Every last one of these despicable fascists will receive his kabuppins. The conscripts will be put to work rebuilding the areas they devastated. The higher-ups to the man will be sent to the grave. The suffering have, they have caused cannot be repaid, but we can punish the people responsible as harshly as possible. Yes, please. Very successful. Good. Very, very good. And we shall do... Equipment. Very good. Spoils of war. Great. Love it. <clears throat> and then expanding the Republic. We've successfully reclaimed our most populous regions or neutralized our most pressing adv adversaries, but there's so much work to be done to rise even to our former power, much less ruling over all of Russia, nevertheless. We're finally in a position to begin looking outwards. To our west lies Latos, a nest of one of the sickest forms of bourgeois degeneracy, war profiteering. To the north lies the vicious bandits of Ugra and the heroic free aviators, establishing the dictatorship of the proletariat across all of West Siberia, will require incorporating or subjugating all of these factions. Very good. Uh, so the Talos might be next, even though they're going to probably be very difficult to take out. But it will have to be done no matter what. Honor the Heroes. Uh, Honor the Heroes reunification. Maybe we'll get those guys first. We can try that one first. Or Yugra. Uh, I'm going to do Yugra. Let's try Yugra. Against deranged banditry. As greedy and vicious as a bourgeois they are, they are at least attempt they at least attempt to govern. There are few things more evil than the common criminal who cares about the people only as far as he can loot them of their belongings. Yugra, overrun by such elements. As a sickening sight to behold, looters have long since filled the void left by retreating governments, and the lives of the people are heck. They are nothing more than self interested scavengers, while the Red Army is an organized force motivated by ideological zeal. We will punish them mercilessly for the savagery. Ekaterinburg, eh? Yugra, yes, please. Uh, actually, go and do that one instead. Go whenever you're ready. Oh, we need more supplies, huh? Oh, oh military factories. Uh, fighters would be nice. Close air support uh, is actually really good to do, but I want... Ooh, we need more anti-tank. That's fine. Do anti-tank first, and then go with way more gas. There you go. Not bad. We're strong frontiers after the reunification of Western Siberian People's Republic. The National Presidium now turns its eyes on the reunification of the whole of West Siberia under the banner of Stalinism. In a speech before thousands of the Tumen City Center, Lazar Kaganovich declared that from Leningrad to Vladivostok, the bourgeoisie feel a great tremor beneath their feet. It is the boots of the workers as they march to war against their oppressors. Armed with knowledge of Stalinist theory and unstoppable in their fury, the tired of the downtrodden shall be unstoppable. Already the army has been mobilized and the frontiers of the Republic already ready to strike at the bourgeois neighbors. New units are being raised from groups of eager Conscripts. Across the state, people are readying themselves to rebuild the Soviet Union once more to victory. Yes, yes, yes. And then we should do promises of freedom. The poor people of Ugra, crushed by the bandits' barbaric brutality, have forgotten how to dream of something better. They meekly cower in their homes, all thought of class consciousness or loyalty to the Union forgotten. One of the advantages of preparing to an attack in an anarchic hive of criminality is that we can easily expand our influence over the border with Ugra. We will let the peasants know that they are not alone. The innocents will be freed from their oppressors, and the guilty will be hounded to the grave. Ugra does not know liberation, but we can remind it of such liberation. And we got another division? Good. More divisions and a little bit of lag? Very cool. Good, good. Oh, we're out of manpower. That's not good, though. Do we core Omsk yet? Oh, looks like we did. Oh, crap. That's not good. We're going to need more population. Good job, Borman. Man the front. 
Yugra is a massive territory of the border that is at first glance impossible to control. Fortunately, this means that the area, although already disorganized bands will have trouble guarding their whole frontier, unfortunately it means that our security is similarly uh, difficult to insert. The Red Army is not known to back down from a challenge, but it will need some direction to adequately close this gap. Intelligent planning is needed to block the entirety of the border from abandoned assault with our available resources. Up next with Into the North. All preparations are complete. The time is now to strike back at the bandits and restore control of Yugo. This will be a challenging trek against a numerous and ruthless foe, but when, ha when have our enemies not been willing to engage in sickening atrocities? Ultimately, the bandits are cowards unwilling to strike, to seriously risk their safety. They all fall into droves when faced with the Red Army. As we step foot in this hostile northern territory, let us not forget why we are doing this. The Red Army is the last best hope of working people against all forms of tyranny, and the slavering raiders of Yugo are among the worst tyrants of all. Good. Uh, we could... Ooh, how many days do we have for this left? Uh, ooh, we could try that. We could, we could, we could try that. So, honor the heroes. Faced with the collapse of the Union, much of the Soviet military embarked on a cowardly path of desertion, mutiny, and criminality. Men chosen for their loyalty and aptitude became the worst of beasts. The same is not true of the female pilots of the free aviators who fought nobly against a fascist menace even with their inferior weapons and in the most inhospitable conditions. For their heroism, these women deserve to be rewarded. We will give them as many rations as we can spare, and the chairman Kaganovich will erect a monument and two men in their honor. Anything else would be an insult to those who stalwartly battled with the Wehrmacht when so many others abandoned the front. Good. Well, obviously we can't do that one when we're at war, but whatever. Hopefully... Oh, yes, please. And... Hopefully they give up. Come on, don't... Okay. And it's going to cancel because we're going to go to war anyways, which is stupid. Just give me the loot. Go, go, go. Just kill them all off. Ah, oh, stupid, but whatever. Communal loyalty. The state can direct creative powers of its citizens to sending feats. However, it cannot do everything. While the government's attention is focused on heavy industry and collective agriculture, it will be unable to meet every concern of the communes. In such times, the people must take matters into their own hands. Propaganda encouraging self-sufficiency and cooperation between citizens is the first step towards molding a spirit of revolutionary sacrifice. People should be taught that every contribution towards the collective well-being, whether it be building wells, teaching the compatriot literacy, organizing work, or any number of other tasks, a social state cannot work until the people learn to work together in all ways. Screw it. You're going to force the attack. And then, break up the units. Or break up the unit. Marxist theory tells us that the nuclear family will weather away for the abolition of private property as the communal institutions rise to take its place. While we have placed efforts into reforming family relations in the past, there's always room to revolutionize things further. The family unit itself must be the Communist Party's next target. Delegating the responsibility of child rearing to the whole community will give the parents freedom for the work or leisure. Values of collective solidarity are easier to instill when the family barriers that separate children are broken down. With the size and resources of our military, it may be a good idea to give it some role in these new crushes. And one more day. Oh, we get more stability there. Nice. Very good. Very good. And we've not won yet? <laughs> Look at the break of the unit. We just... Nope. No baby here. No, 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 no. Oh, look at that. Conservative democracy. No, so beers. Oh, that's going to be a pain in the butt. And ultra-nationalism. Nikitin. All right. Just go up there if you can. Thank you. And we'll do agriculture methods because we need more population as fast as possible. I don't understand why you guys are not really trying to get all the way up here, but there you go. Good luck. And then, family building. Abandoned by Bukhara in their time of need, the Russian people are in a sense a nation of orphans. There are, however, also many literal orphans who lost their parents from the war's ravages, hunger, or simply abandonment. The orphanages of Tiumen and many others of our cities are sadly filled to well over capacity with such children. Now that we have the time and resources to deal with this abominable situation, we must, or else we are not socialists, and hardly even men. The WSBR will set up an adoption system that is a pride of the world, linking families without children and children without families. Soon our orphanages will be empty, and we'll have taken the first step to overcome the trauma of our most vulnerable from this long, long war. Good. Revolutionary conditions. Oh, Bennett here. Mr. Bennett. Salutations. We still have no manpower, which sucks, but whatever. Ah, uh, revolutionary crushes. One of the most significant aspects of a repopulation program was the establishment of the so-called revolutionary crushes, a network of civil organizations dedicated to the rearing and caring of children. These crushes, under, for, under the watchful eye of the party, have also integrated a number of different education programs for both the children and the women who tend to them, creating a nest of future ideologues and Soviet zealots. Good. However, a question has been raised regarding the specific administration of the crushes. The rapid success has caused a number of interest groups to lobby for control over them, with many seeing the crushes as a path to success and importance in the future. Ultimately, Gagano and his closest advisors have convened to decide a way forward and announce who will have the ultimate control over these child-rearing organizations. 
After what it seemed to be hours of deliberation, the group has narrowed the candidacy for control over the crushes down to two potential prospects, the local communes and the military. The local communes, if they had control over the crushes, would ensure that children would be raised within their own communities and be instilled with not only a sense of community importance and family, family unity, but also receive the fair nece necessary civilian education that should be available to every young man. On the other hand, if the military was to control the crushes, they would end up much more centralized, growing up with a greater sense of identity than to their own community. On top of this, of course, the military would be interested, just as we would be, in raising a future generation of soldiers and raised literally from birth to fight and die for the Union. As the night grows late, Kaganovich's advisory council waited with bated breath on the final decision. The military administrate them, more manpower, two-year draft, four-year draft, versus let each company decide what is in reason. Oh, no. Uh, I want to go more libertarian socialist for this one, but I like the stability, but we definitely need to get to four-year draft. I think it'll be okay if we go this one. Um, and, and the whole, like, thing about reforming and stuff really will come about once we get to the regional stage. So, I think we... I'm going to go push for four-year draft. Uh, we really need more population. So, as much as I don't want to do that one, and I prefer the other one, we have to go this route. Cool. Family building. And then we shall honor the heroes like we've already read. And we must read Xander Ham. The free aviators trapped in the frigid north took on the Luftwaffe for years unaided. They made many sacrifices in order to defend the Russian people from the scourge of terror bombings. Now that the West Siberian People's Republic has advanced to, the door, to their doorstep, they need to be isolated no longer. The Communist Party is hard at work drafting a suitable proposal for the annexation of their aviators' territory into ours, permanently relieving their difficulties with resources and reuniting them with their Union's rightful successors. Every pilot will receive military honors, and the civilian population will be awarded for its dedication to the cause. Rest assured, the contribution to the Russian people will never be for gotten. Collapse of the underground state unity. Inconceivable. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right, let's go ahead and grab industry, maybe. Seems kind of nice. And then national focus. Thank you very much. Family building. Escalate the population program. Honor the heroes. It's a tragic piece of public knowledge that for our population is suffering after decades of foreign civil wars. For years, German planes have flown over our skies and targeted our people, killing soldiers and civilians, men, women, and children indiscriminately. While it has undoubtedly caused a large decrease of suffering throughout our lands, most terribly, what this anarchy has done is cut down on our already small population numbers through bombing attrition, bandit raids, and acts of God. A number of different solutions have been drafted to the so-called repopulation program, though one above all stands out. Women have for some time worked alongside men in certain roles that are fitting to them. This was done initially out of necessity, but as things are on their way to normalization, the added productivity that women bring to the workplace in terms of an extra set of hands is worth mentioning. On the other hand, however, it is the nature of women to bear children. If they're working, they can't bear children, and vice versa. If we were to limit once more women's opportunity for work and work advancement until they sired a requisite number of children, it would simultaneously encourage women to have children while not outright banning them from the workplace like some reactionary stooges may encounter, may encounter or encourage. Certainly, we may see a drop in productivity as some women leave to bear children if we do opt to es escalate the program, but we will see a noticeable increase in our birth rates. Ultimately, the decision rests with the chairman. No, we must make a stand for our sisters. Uh, women in the workplace with traditional roles. Academic and industrial expertise goes down. It's just, it's slightly more monthly population. It's not really that much. We get a total of 415 plus 5% doesn't, won't do that much. Uh, we do get 15% more monthly population. I was looking at the one with repopulation programs, but... We already did the recruitable population with a four-year draft. I think we'll go with this one. Since, so we must make a stand for our sisters for now. I think that would be okay to do. Cool. Honor the heroes. And then we'll do extender hand. Cool. And then we will have a Red Air Force. Our successes have been highly encouraging, but there's so much work to be done. Work that the Red Army cannot do alone. The Rack naturally has air capabilities, as do some of our world of competitors. Fortunately, we have an ally here. The free aviators, perhaps unsatisfied with our honors and eager to get back into the fight, have already agreed to assist Chairman Kaganovich and the foundation of a Red Air Force with our newly obtained aircraft. Fascism has long taken to the skies, and so must we, if we are to have any chance of surviving in the world of modern warfare. The free aviators thank us, though. The free aviators are kind enough to accept our gratitude, and... Yevdokia Bershanskaya flew down to personally accept her award. The free aviators seem to have appreciated her kindness, and the award ceremonies was chosen to be held in front of the free aviators' monument. The ceremony went smoothly enough, with the weather being favorable and the temperature relatively comfortable for a day in Siberia. Yevdokia stepped up to the podium, gladly accepted the medal that General Secretary Kaganovich placed around her neck, and gave a short speech thanking the people of Kaganovich Grad. The General Secretary may have wished for a Yevdokia to have thanked him as well in her speech, but he did not show his dissatisfaction. After her speech concluded, he, uh, several pilots performed aerial maneuvers above the crowd, and the end of the ceremony was marked by a gun salute from the military. The beginnings of a beautiful friendship. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to scan for loot immediately. Because loot is always good. A rare Air Force and the People's Republic restored. Hopefully, 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 hopefully. Um, Yukura? Wait, do we not court? Oh, we're, we're still like calling them. That's good. 
and then the People's Republic restored. After years of effort from two men's soldiers, workers and leaders, our dream is on the verge of becoming reality. Barring Zlatalis, we control the entirety of Western Siberia's People's Republic. A former territory, establishing Chairman Kaganovich as one of Russia's most viable contenders for total reunification. All that is left to do is reconquer our last two territories, and the Republic shall be complete. Once we have consolidated control over them, we can move on to the next step, reestablishing a proletarian government across the entire former Soviet Union in the name of Chairman Kaganovich. The Air Force returned. The ambassador to Surgut has returned with excellent news. After weeks of negotiation, the free aviators have agreed to join our nation, using the air power to protect the socialist revolution in TMM. As we speak, civilian personnel are being transported to their former capital, and the new airbus of People's Republic to be trained by the aviators, and warplanes are being built in their factories to bolster this force of pilots. At last, the working class have their own air force once more that will protect the poor and downtrodden of the earth from capitalist oppression. The winds will whisper for when the night witches come. Great, great, I love it, and hope you love it as well. Because now, we got to get rid of a certain Dragunov character. As much as I love guns, how strong are they? 10,000 manpower, not bad. More than us. Up to 7 divisions, but we have 10. And we do have 20 combo with infantry, which is good. And gets you some work with more guns. Oh boy, we definitely need more guns. That is not bueno. Uh, where's the guns? More guns, please. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. My hope is to at least reunify this part of Siberia before the end of the episode. But... Honor our chairman, authoritarian socialism. Oh, look at that. Yes, please. Suburban rail lines, agriculture. I'm going to go, oh, poverty. Ah, I'm going to go with poverty. Address living centers. Our poverty rate will begin to improve. During two men's most dire day, civilian conditions were put on the back burner for favor of furbished military production. Those times have passed, and all statistics show that our workers are being rewarded for their efforts with deplorable standards of living, at least we, at least compared to those before the war. In his magnanimity, the Communist Party has decided to devote some resources to improving our pe ordinary people's lot in life. The ordinary people of two men will soon enjoy greater amenities, a more abundant housing supply, improved education, and all the food they could ask for. What's not to love? And we got some basic motorized. Let's get some improved motorized, then. Nice. And then we should unify the industries. It is em emblematic of our good fortune that our most of our pressing or present economic difficulty is that we have too much industry to run effectively under our current administration. The West Siberian People's Republic has received a windfall of factories and equipment from recent military victories, and our management has not necessarily kept up. This will be dealt with the same way the party has dealt with similar issues in the past, centralization. A new larger gospel band is a key to pulling us out of this mess. Yes, yes, yes. I want to raid. Why can't we raid? Please let us raid. Uh, and we'll do aid the peasants. As the situation within our territory continues to stabilize, the Communist Party has been met with new responsibilities in the civilian sector. Now that wartime measures are becoming less severe, peasant associations have become bolder and the requests from the government arguing for more tractors, tools, and state support. In better times, we would ignore or suppress them, but our desperate need for provisions gives the peasants significant leverage. So special priority will be placed on agricultural equipment and government relief. They will get their demands, at least while they can pressure us into meeting them. Very good. And then honor our chairman. Not since Marx, Lenin, and Stalin has there been a greater friend of the workers than our own chairman Kaganovich. He has toiled daily and night to protect the people of two men from fascist aggression and turn the West Siberian People's Republic into a worthy successor of the Soviet Union. His dedication, bravery, and wisdom deserve honors even greater than those that we have already bestowed upon him. And honor him we shall. In the tradition of great Soviet leaders, Chairman Kaganovich will have a city bearer's title. The town of Ishim will become Kaganovichgrad in his honor. May both of them stand tall forevermore. Very nice. And Siberian rail lines. The WSBR's relatively small size up until recently has made logistics relatively simple. Now that we control significantly more area, it is clear that we need a larger, more organized transportation network capable of transporting freight and personnel over greater dis distances. Rail infrastructure is relatively straightforward to create and capable of moving enormous volumes of goods at fast speeds. Overhauling our network will make the WSBR more than capable of achieving its expansion across West Siberia and supplying its continually growing factories. Great. And then against bourgeois decadence. Communists abhor war, but fight when necessary to protect the working classes. The bourgeois have no such qualms. Even in the chaos of warlord Russia, it's possible for a sufficiently amoral person to turn a profit in Zlatelsk. A clique of weapons manufacturers sell the weapons of war to all sides, sparing no concern for the client's motives. The prosperity of all capitalists is sown on blood and exploitation, but Dragunov and his cronies have an especially direct in the bloodshed they have caused. The workers' armies stands ready to topple these vile criminals and seize their ill-gotten gains. Their massive stockpile of modern weaponry is only a bonus. Yes, yes, yes. Still building up factories. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Against the caravans. By the rope. 
Let's buy the rope. The arm dealers of Taos are devoid of integrity in their choice of customers. Sometimes this means selling to those who would stand to dramatically decrease their lifespans. La Taos has so far displayed no opposition to com commence or commerce with the workers' state, allowing us to amass a sizable quantity of their weapons and ammo. The greatest advantage we have in our struggle is the short-sighted greed of our opponents. They will have sold us the rope. Now let us hang them with it. But we have better agricultural methods already. Holy crap! If you like to read about this, please go ahead. This happens every campaign, but this is really, really good for more monthly population plus 20%. Recruitable population goes up by 10%. Better consumer goods, factory output, less division training time. What's not to love? And rusted caravans. The rat's nest may be unassailed, but their profiteer vermin of more vulnerable assets throughout the region. Caravans filled with money and weapons are trying to extract as much wealth as possible while they still can. We cannot allow the bourgeoisie to sash their stolen wealth away from the hands of the workers who need them. Catching these scum will require casting a wide, wide net. Motorized patrols will be sent throughout the region, searching every road and passenger or passage for black market trade. Centralization is key to our victory, and all commerce must flow through the state. And then march on the mountains. We are ready. The two men has obtained all weapons it needs to attack Zatos. And the merchants of death remain blissfully unaware that one of their best clients is preparing to destroy them. The Urals have remained out of their reach for years, but the resurgent West Siberian People's Republic cannot be halted. Our armies have been hardened fighting like the likes of the Black League while they're while they have grown fat and rich off plunder. These blood-sucking capitalists have remained safe and sound while they plunge West Siberia into chaos and instability. We now have the chance to liberate the region from their influence once and for all. Equipment, shall we? Yes we shall. And cross the Urals? Yes. Oh, Vorkuta, too. Uh, we've eliminated Zotas, and there's only one adversary left in West Siberia, and it pales in comparison to those we've already faced. The inmates of the Vorkuta Gulag were largely left to their own devices after the USSR's collapse, and took the opportunity to found their own statelet. They preferred to be left alone, but now that we've consolidated their power, there's no reason to delay their incorporation into a republic. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead, but logistically speaking, this is a demanding task due to the necessity of crossing the rules, but the inmates themselves are hardly a threat. They are merely criminals, and we are the people's judges punishing them for their transgressions. And we shall also read, in the meantime, wise are soldiers. While our policies to encourage population growth have been moderately successful so far, we can always go further. Why limit ourselves to subsidizing parenthood and hoping for success when we could give more direct state backing? At the moment, we simply don't have the time to wait for the love for love to run its course unaided. Oh, DC. A new program will seek to automatically assign potential partners to one another with voluntary membership in exchange for increased rations for female civilians. The other side of these new relations will come uh, from men automatically registered once they join the army by demolishing the barriers separating potential partners from one another. The Communist Party hopes to build thousands of fruitful families in the near future. State-mandated wives. Wow. Less political power, less ability, but more monthly population. Sometimes it's just got to be done. All right, so we've got to be careful about this. Let's go to over here. Uh, let's see. I should have probably been training our soldiers with some more. Go and cut these guys off as well. So this way we can concentrate down here a little bit. Oh, they caught us. Oh, that's okay. Let's go and do that then. Oh, you're still kind of doing okay. As long as you can get over here, that's the most important thing. And if they start abandoning the line, that's pretty good too. Uh, can we actually attack the Talus maybe? We actually might be able to. Yep, we actually can. Nice. Where are you guys headed, huh? Where are you guys headed, son? Oh, you're going to try to circle us? Nope. Not thinking like that. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You guys go there and then do that. Zotas, arm spots captured. If you like to read about that, please go right ahead. Forward. Good, good, good. Okay, all we had to need was capital. That was much easier than I thought. So in the future, whenever I play as any other nation, like in this part of Russia, all you got to do to take out Sverdlovsk is take out Sverdlovsk. All you have to do here is take out Zotas. So that's actually much, so much easier than I thought it would be. So my apologies for the rage earlier. I just... I just want to be successful, man. We just want to be successful just like everyone else, right? We just want to be successful in life. And then, cross the Urals. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, I read this one. Yes. Vorkota shall be ours next. Good, good, good. They probably don't have a big old army down there, there but that's all right. Look at that. 87,000 people? Yes, please. And an war. Man, we are running way behind schedule in my mind right now. Just because of... Uh, how long it took to kill Sverdlovsk and Omsk. Oh my goodness. And then, once we're at war, we have to do this one, and then we'll almost be done with this part of the focus tree, the five-year plan. Nikolai Bukharin's insistence on maintaining the new economic policy while successful in pockets of the Soviet Union failed to build up large pockets of the country and cause its total collapse of the Germans. Our need for development is high, and the time frame must be very soon. Following the old Soviet guidelines for industrial development in the future, when the WSPR is still as vulnerable as it is, would be suicidal. The never act enacted, the never enacted five-year plan, part of the policy plank of the Bolshevik Party's opposition, as the only solution to our industrial woes, an enormous state mobilization of all our productive forces for development, as suggested by Joseph Stalin, would have saved the Soviet Union in 1941. But we must settle for bringing its newest incarnation back to the power over all of Russia. Nice. 
Which I should have taken earlier, but hey, whatever it is, what it is. Uh, we're going in. Oh, they do have a division. One. Cool. Oh, what do we have over here? Scam for loot? Yeah, we still might be able to get that one done. And Red Dawn. Victory at last through the wise and cautious leadership of Chairman Kaganovich and adherence to the Marxist principles. We have conquered the entirety of our former territory and are now stronger than ever. The West Siberian People's Republic is now the sole sovereign government in the region and a worthy contender for the reunification of the Soviet Union. All the success deserves some celebration. Chairman Kaganovich has already declared a holiday and military parades will soon fill the streets of Tiumen. Of course, the real thanks goes to the workers, peasants, and soldiers for their tireless efforts and fierce loyalty to the Republic. Glory to the Communist Party and may it be soon the Communist Party of the, of the Soviet Union. Very, very soon. Nice. Very, very nice. Well, civilian construction. Man, getting up to the stage has been taking a long booty time. Oh, my goodness. Go, go, go. Uh, if you like to hear about the gulags, please go right ahead. It is what it is, but not bad. Oh, more recruitable population factor. Yes, sign us up. Go ahead and integrate them. And we'll do that regional stage once we're done here. Pavlodar, I would love to kill Pavlodar. Please, let me kill Pavlodar. But Comey, I... I when's the last time on this channel we've seen Comey actually win? Oh, they got a ton of resistance, though. Samara still might win, though. Sislav? Oh, boy. Can we unite with him? That'd be really cool. That'd actually be very, very cool. Oh, uh, we can do that still. So. Oh, can I raid in? Why can't I raid anybody? Please, let me raid. The five-year plan and a red done. I love the purple, though. Ah, Mario. Lazar. Iron Lazar. Mario Kaganovich. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Are they yet to learn from the mistakes of the predecessors? Oh boy. Oh, look at that population though. That is really nice. How much artillery do we have? Not enough. But it's time to switch this around. Uh, we're going to actually tell you guys to be f oh, 40s. There you go. You guys will be the 40s, which we'll edit. But we're going to go and replace these guys with just straight up artillery. There you go. Do we have enough already? Yes, we do. We barely have enough. Which is good. Go and train for everyone. And we do have one loot, which sucks. We, oh, look at this. Oh, the five-year plan. Over actions disrupt our agriculture, our agricultural strain will increase. It reaches 100 fan will begin to affect, affect us. Agricultural strain is 25. It's reduced by 10.5. Um, added military factory, civilian factory. Eh. You get way more construction speed. Severely developed urban centers. Is this worth doing? Increases agricultural strain slightly. Um, I kind of want to do this one. It hurts us, but it increases agricultural reduction of strain. It's currently 10.50. Holy crap. Um, I don't mind that one. I like more resources. But let's get a bonus. For 50, and then 90, so we can't do any more higher. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, cool. And let's form the West Siberian People's Republic. It's taking us way too long to be able to do this, but whatever. Look at Mr. Stash there. Two men unifies West Siberia. The old guard returns to relevance. You bet your butt it does. So much for that extra loot. Oh, uh, this is what we've been waiting for. If you like to read about these, please go right ahead. But I'm just going to click on everything here, pretty much. Army professionalism. Uh, stability would be nice. Equipment. Academic base. Research facilities. Man, we spend uh, so much so quickly. Workers' organizations. Equipment. Agriculture. I'm just glad we saved up all this stuff. Construction speed would not be bad. Stability is okay. We have a lot of manpower. 320,000. Jesus. I love the four-year draft. Uh, we'll do this once. Cool. Spend. Cut. Spend, 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 spend. Build, 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 build. Oh, crap. Oh, we have overextended administration. Oh, that sucks so much. That sucks so much. In the meantime, we got to start going down the line. That's probably one of the reasons why we weren't doing so well as either. We'll go with strategic theorem. And then we shall do... The great popular triumph. The West Siberian People's Republic has been established. The peoples of Siberia have been liberated from the rulers, from the false leader in Svedlovsk, to the despicable All-Russian Black League, to the thieves in Ugrap, and the despicable war profiteers of Zlotovsk. Now that we have reunified the region, the hardest step in the long and arduous process to reunite Russia has begun. Thousands of our fellow countrymen are out of work, starving, displaced. We must provide for our people and prepare for the future conflicts, as we are not the only ones who seek to reunite Russia. Very true. Look at all those improvements. I love it. And we can close this one, because we don't need it yet. Okay, so 5%, 12%. We do run an annual deficit for now, but that'll go away hopefully eventually. I think it's over here. There we go. And we actually do need to be making some tanks. Uh, let's go do this. Tanks. Let's do that. And actually, I'll just replace with these. It's fine. There you go. 20. That's as much as we can afford. 
Start making some of those guys. Only one for now. Uh, yeah, only one. That'd be good. 40s. Yeah, that'd be really good to get. Um, actually, I'll cut you guys. Uh, immediately become 40s. I don't care. All right, let's read about the next uh, event thing. Honor the heroes of socialism. Oh, that's not bad. Stability, research speed, and political power. Or uplift the proletarian contribution. Honor the worker. Oh, boy. Honor the heroes. Ooh. Hmm. Reflect upon the words of socialism. Decreases political power gain by 2.5%. Uh, cosmopolitanism. Decreases trade opinion by 10%. Oh, American supplies arrive. A new shipment of weapon, ammo, clothing, medical supplies, and much more has arrived at our borders, supplied by the generosity of the CIA. So we can use these guns and our enemies, and eventually on the Germans that destroyed our nation. These weapons have traveled over great oceans, through hostile territory, and horse-drawn wagons and sleds before our finally arriving here. Undoubtedly. This is only a fraction of what the Americans actually shipped us as corrupt officials, and bands would have been paid off with some of the bounty, but what we have received will be more than enough to equip battalions with what better weapons to continue to fight to reunite Russia? Spazible Americanets. Cool! So, actually, the CIA, the AI, is actually doing stuff for us. Uh, so it's on the right side here that hurts us if we don't want to go libertarian socialists. A new Soviet life. Uh, this one, what does this say? Increased conscription factor, decreased stability, spiritual and political flourishing. A uh, mother should be proud. Non-combat roles. A culture proletariat overall. Cosmetopolism. Rehabilitation. Nationalism. A union together and equal. Seems like the left side for everything seems to be probably more for, towards libertarian socialism. Unity foremost and unity enduring. Uh, wait, no. The, no. Change in popularity of authoritarian socialism. Huh. Affirmative action. Hmm. I, I want more political power right now. Research efficiency gains good. Goods. I want to do honor, honor the heroes of socialism. So, the soldiers and workers contributed much to their reunification effort. But we must honor the brave men who directed those on the front line. The politicians, bureaucrats, and generals and diplomats who all led the republic to victory shall be given the highest honors available. Medals will be given and statues will be built in the names of those who led us to reunify the region and those who, God willing, lead us to reunify Russia. Yeah, we definitely got to lower uh, a lot of things here. Cool. Restoration day. Nice. Cool. Nice. I want that extra political power because we can really, 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 really use that. And keep going with army stuff, engineering, research. We did all that research stuff, which is good. We could probably use better engineers, better artillery. Can we do that one? No, we cannot. Okay. Keep going for guns then. For now, about Restoration Day. Well, the West Siberian People's Republic is united once again, all across our glorious nation. You can hear the people singing, the trumpets blaring, our men parading through the streets of welcoming cities who welcome not only their liberation, but a new Russian prosperity. All of them call out the same thing, glory to Russia and glory to Kaganovich, her liberator. A united West Siberia is the only the first step to a united Russia, and we believe that under our leader we will undoubtedly succeed. Today, Kaganovich so spoke in front of a massive crowd in Tiumen and to crowds across West Siberia through loudspeakers proclaiming the liberation of West Siberia and the reunification of West Siberian People's Republic. The people won their greatest victory, he said, to a jubilant crowd, and now the people's vanguard is in full control of West Siberia under the guidance of the party and her leader, Lazar Kaganovich. From West Siberia, there is no clear path into Russia's liberation. The people's government is here for the Union. Great, great, great. And then after this one, we will go ahead and do what? Oh, oh boy, the bad mandate. Reflect upon Stalin's words. Captain Flo, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. The West Siberian People's Republic is in an ideological crossroads. The thoughts of Joseph Stalin have guided our state through his darkest hours, but it's clear that we cannot afford or cannot strictly adhere to Stalinism forever. We will follow uh, the teachings of Stalin, but as more time goes on, more and more nations liberalize. It is only a matter of time before cracks appear in the system. His ideas seem to grow more and more antiquated by the day. As such, it would seem like it is time that we look to other sources of theory to augment the ideology, while still sticking to the original word of Stalin in most regards. We will be able to derive the true shape of our ideology from the writings of Stalin himself. More authoritarian socialism reduces the administrative strain on our state, which is a very, very good thing for us. Very cool. And what do we have over here? Invest in construction. We can do some more weekly manpower, which we're okay with. Uh, let's see. Current agricultural strain is 69. Nice. Very nice. First five-year plan. Research and development. I well, actually don't mind doing that one. That doesn't hurt us at all here, so. Oh, oh. How's our resources doing for this stuff? We could use more rubber. Fuel is doing tremendous. Steel or aluminum is doing tremendous. So that's we don't really need to do that. Develop urban centers. I would like more roads. Uh, construction. Ooh, that's not bad. Way more construction speed, consumer goods is not bad. Add more infrastructure, flat, ooh, military factories. I would like more cities. Slightly, 69. Oh, that's slightly? It goes up by 25? Holy crud. 
But, let's go to the new Soviet state, maybe? Including this political power gain by 5%. As the great Marx once said, philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. That we are the keepers of the most orthodox strain of Marxist Leninism means nothing if we do not commit theory to practice. We must remove the West Siberian People's Republic in the case that and the cast that Stalin made. The whole government organization must be rebuilt along Stalinist lines. Civil servants must be trained in Stalinist Syria, and the party must be made to fulfill the goals that Stalin laid so many years ago. Good, good, good. And we'll go with horizontal research. Uh, less growth. Yeah, that's, that's better overall. Mil more military factories. 11,000 is not bad. Uh, how else are we doing? We're making quite a few of these. That's good. We're going to need more main ba basic battle tanks. Good, good, good. Probably going to need to go up to three. We'll keep making a few more of these for now. That'll be fine. And then reflect upon his word. Oh, strategic theorem? Nice. Let's go to the attrition planning. Thank you. The new Soviet life. More stability. Soviet spirit. Um... More war sports, not bad. Well, because we want to go a certain down route, we'll probably go with a constant democratization. Or democratism. Yeah. We lose some political power, but that's okay. Comrade Kaganovich has been moving impetus has been the moving impetus behind the West Siberian People's Republic since its inception. His word is law and members of the higher echelons of the party merely exist as advisors or rubber stamps. However, this is far from the envision of democratic centralism as envisioned by Lenin, where members of the party would have would have to discuss and debate policies among themselves, first by voting on them, not just for the following the will of the general secretary. It's time we introduce more democratic centralist measures into the party and let different more party members introduce and debate policies before we vote on them. Oh. Oh, wait, why did it get rid of that? Oh, wait, did I not do that one yet? I thought we did that one. Why did it quit out? Uh, okay. Well, that's very weird. It's probably best to not have a famine, too, so. Um, yeah, that's very awkward. What the heck happened? Did I do something? I might have done something. Did I? I probably did something. Probably. So he plays Ireland sometime, too. Not bad, though. Really not bad. Still going back up, which is good. Well, at least the administrative strain goes away, which is, or slightly goes lower, which is good. So, it is now 1966. Hope you guys are having a great year. And anything else here? 60. It's not bad. Research and development. Yeah. Just keep getting more research and stuff. That, that's so good to get. Infrastructure increases agricultural strain. How much is a small amount? It decreases by 13.5% uh, every month. Uh, ooh. There you go. Increase it even more every month. And then we'll do amnesty for for the redeemable? Uh, probably, yeah. Uh, so to say that the reactionary regimes in Omsk and Sverdlovsk stray from the revolutionary ideals of Marx, Lenin, and Stalin would be a vast understatement. However, these bourgeois states were also staffed by civil servants who showed great promise, and to exclude them from the newly rebuilt civil service for the West Siberian People's Republic may simply, simply because they didn't pass all the political loyalty tests with the flying colors would be a waste indeed. Instead, we should give those who show talent and prospect of sympathy for the working class a chance to redeem themselves through the service in the People's Republic, even if their political testing results weren't perfect. Under the watchful eye of the Communist Party, they will surely be able to earn the forgiveness of the working class and contribute to the reconstruction of social Socialism in Western Siberia. Not bad. Uh, let's wait another month for that stuff. We got some research done. Very, very bueno. 62. Very nice. Very nice. And then the new Soviet spirit. Whereas the more material concerns of the social state are obs absolutely a priority concern of ours, we must also pay a mind to the spirit of our people and the attitudes that they hold towards one another. We are, of course, a free international society in which all citizens and people share a sense of social solidarity. However, the precise strains of thought up that are the most constructive must be decided upon. Shall they be cosmopolitan and open? Shall they be patriotic and protective? The people's minds are the greatest fuel from which socialism grows. We must ensure that they are well, well encouraged. It looks like we started running out more manpower. That's not good. Oh, our population is going down. Recruitable population. Oh, huh, that's not bueno. And right now we are at 25% versus 46%. All right, so be it. All right, 71. Oh, did it go up? It might have gone up. That's not good. Let's see. Soviet cosmopolitanism. Trade. Affirmative action. Decreases maximum research to market. Monthly poverty change goes up, though. Let's see the new Soviet life. We uplift all workers of the West Siberian People's Republic, not just the ones that look and act like the majority of Russians. All the minorities within our borders should be able to get the same health care, education, schooling, and wages as any other human being who's privileged enough to work and live within our nation's borders. Instead of letting ourselves be divided by language, race, and culture, we should unite ourselves with ideology and the shared blood, sweat, and tears that were shed to secure West Siberia for our nation. 
propaganda of the word. Secretary Lazar Kaganovich walked up the stairs to the second story of the Revolutionary Literature Production Facility, the largest propaganda shop in West Siberia, the small entourage of party lackeys and uh, facility managers in tow. In front of him was a large, expansive collection of printers, all, oh, my apologies, stamping the same pictures over and over. By the end of the day, they would be delivered all over Siberia and beyond, to comrades and to the workers all over Russia. This is the printing room. It requires minimal human con contact and is quite efficient at the use of ink. Said a manager, smiling a little as... Uh, Kaganovich looked over his work. That is good, responded Kaganovich, looking, walking towards, forward, and between the machines. How many do you produce today? Anywhere from 500 to 1,000, depending on weather conditions and the other production factors. The manager went forward and pulled a propaganda poster out and handed it to Kaganovich. That's quite nice, if I do say so myself. On it was a picture of Kaganovich, his face much younger, more attractive, smiling in front of a bunch of school children. Below it are the words, Kaganovich's leaders or lessons for young pioneers. I must say, said Kaganovich, I do like it very much. Now, if only we could increase production. Hmm. 31, oh wow, 31.5 is not bad. Keep going with this one. We need more blueprints. We're a little bit behind in my opinion. Uh, sure, and then we'll do 50, ooh, severely. Uh, let's do slightly, maybe? Hmm, maybe. Eh, I'm kind of okay for that one. New Soviet life. A mother should be proud. War support. Increased population by a little bit more. Stability of culture proletarian overall. Now, which one will go with more libertarian social support? I'm not really sure which one would do more. Oh, that's that one. That's good. Uh, for the abolition of oppression, sounds like the one that would work for us. Lose stability, get more conscription. In fact, for the abolition of oppression, we've made great strides to uplift all the workers who reside within our borders, but we must not forget the women of the West Siberian People's Republic. While many are homemakers, many also stepped into the shoes of men during the reunification wars. Record amount of women are factory workers, scientists, and engineers, and record amount of women are in higher education, but it isn't hard to set a record when the number was already near zero. Heavy investments will be made to allow women to have careers and seek higher education, and propaganda will be produced so the public will warm to the fact that we are all equal regardless of gender. A new policy? International document to Secretary Lazar Kaganovich from Security Minister, text with the unification of Western Siberia under the leadership of the General Secretary. We are at a crossroads as it relates to the nature of regulation of both our original citizens and the new citizens who have found their way into the glorious People's Republic. Specifically, the questions relate to whether we should begin the process of redistributing the surplus value of our citizens just as aggressively as we did to our original core and fact to safeguard the revolution, specifically as it relates to clothing, food, housing, etc and to save them from their own material decadence, or do we relax such regulations for the time being in order to make tr transition smoother for the liberated peoples? The decision rests at the behest of the Secretary, and his decision shall be the will of the people and the party. The revolution will not be stopped for the sake of a sack of potatoes. Perhaps we can afford to ease up our policies for now. Hmm. Hmm. Make a transition smoother. We can ease up maybe just a little bit. But that's where we're going to end today's episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we shall continue down our march towards maybe attempting to get a certain core man. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.